I'm driving to Hunts Point with Beverly Day Burlock. She fought against the infilling that she was seeing in her community. It didn't change anything. The municipality says they have no power. It's the province. The province says they have no power. It's the federal government. The federal government says it's the Department of Environment. She's out walking with Daniel Robertson. It just ruins the whole ambiance of the community. Hunts Point. The sign says, Quaint Fishing Village, 1788. Some like the charming old cottages, but this is the new normal. The cottages that were here have been here since the 40s, and it had sort of a, a nice quaint feeling. Everybody loved to come to Hunts Point and drive through, and almost everybody I talked to is very upset about this. Everything that's happened here in the last couple of years is legal and approved with permits, but the infilling for many has changed the quaint vibe. Down the road in Lunenburg County on a quiet lane that leads to West Davers Beach, homeowners are alarmed by a recent tax sale of this area of their lane. They were shocked it was up for sale by the municipality of Lunenburg. They have a map that shows it's environmentally protected. We had looked into it ourselves at the, on the tax sale because we thought we would maybe purchase it just to leave it, preserve it as it is, an environmentally protected area so nothing could be built here. We said, well, there's no point in buying it because it can't be touched. And then when it sold and now, and now has been listed in real estate and withdrawn from real estate, um, it became a, a larger issue for us. They live beside the beach and the pond that's alive with critters. The pond flows underneath the road and carves a stream into the beach and out to sea. The pond is marked on the oldest of maps from when they handed out the lots here in the late 1700s. And their old houses have stood here since then. A few days ago, dump trucks left four loads of gravel at the edge of the lane at the recently purchased land. That worried them. So did this real estate listing, since taken down, which told potential buyers land can be filled with gravel soil to develop for building a home or cottage. The person who bought the land told me through our email exchanges there are no plans to sell the land and there will be no infilling. Everything that's been done has been approved by an inspector. The municipality of the district of Lunenburg established a set of bylaws and this was designated an environmentally sensitive area and yet when you go to the Department of Environment they say oh we don't we don't go by those bylaws we go by the provincial bylaws. Well nobody told us that and what's the point of having municipal bylaws if nobody adheres to them? It's doesn't make any sense. Will Balser is the Coastal Adaptation Coordinator for Ecology Action Centre. So it can be extremely navigating to know even who to call about a particular issue, never mind understanding the regulations that are oftentimes very complicated and very specific to a, a particular environment. If you're looking at wetlands, there's one set of regulations. Looking at coastlines, there's multiple sets of regulations and a new one coming in with the Coastal Protection Act. It's not just rural Nova Scotia where the ocean is coveted. Throughout Halifax, with development booming, infilling is booming too. I would say in, in Halifax we see an more, even more intensive pressure on development in coastal areas where we're literally building out into the water to get more development space. Certainly in some rural areas there's very de desirable locations that people really want to be and they will build on very small lots and, and, and again everyone wants to be as close to the water as possible. That's, that's basic Nova Scotian psychology. <laughs> To solve all of this, the Coastal Protection Act, passed in 2019, will be completed and in effect by next year. John Summers is the executive lead on this as a team writes the new regulations. Climate change has been described as a disaster unfolding in slow motion, so even though sea level rise is, is gradual, it's really important that we think about that and make sure that we're moving new development back far enough from the water or high up enough above the water to make sure that we're safer in the future from coastal flooding and erosion. Farther back from the ocean and higher up, those will be some of the changes. No matter what we do in the next couple of years, we're still going to see huge impacts from sea level rise. Those are already baked into the, into the situation. For Beverly Day Burlock and Daniel Robertson, they fear the Coastal Protection Act will come too late for Hunts Point. But with climate change and rising sea levels, they hope the act can make the difference. Colleen Jones, CBC News, Halifax.